Welcome back. I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec. And today we're going to challenge Fuliana because we're going to talk about nonverbal communication. Those of you who have experienced Fuliana in person will know that there is a fair bit of communication that happens verbally when she's in the room and not so much of the nonverbal because there's just no time to do the hand gestures or the body language. But we're not actually going to talk about body language and that style of nonverbal communication. We're going to talk more, I guess, about behaviour and patterns of behaviour in terms of how that, what that is communicating to your team or to your work colleagues. So I shall let herself speak because uh, for those of you who have been listening weekly, she hasn't had the chance to say much in the last few weeks. So we're going to have to have catch up today. Well, thank you, Kim. But this, <laughs> this nonverbal communication is, is not something I like. I prefer verbal communication. But now, seriously, people can express things like support, approval, disapproval, engagement, concern confidence, all these things by just the way they behave. And we sometimes, I mean, with communication, we talk about the style, the method, we talk about body language, eye contact. But in this case is try and think about what are you saying in your actions? And let's break it down a bit and let's take some examples to make it real. So the first thing is if you're at the meeting and you're already at the meeting, and you're sitting there, but you're not saying anything, and you never say anything, what is that saying? Are you engaged, not engaged? Are you there because you have to be there or not? Would people say, or are you sitting there in judgment? So you've got to think about that. If you're at the meeting and then you absolutely take over, what is that saying? I'm not interested in somebody else's views. I know what I'm doing and I'm taking over because I know the best answer and I also want to show off. Or you might just be enthusiastic and you need to rein it in. Another thing, for example, we talk about culture. We talk about a place where it's inclusive and treat people like people and not just workhorses, etc. And then say the culture is that you have morning tea for people's birthday. And you're one of the people that never turns up because guess what? You're really busy. What is that saying? Is it saying, oh, poor guy, he's really busy. Poor woman, she's busy. They're all busy. You just don't care about others and you don't practice what we as an organization value. And you've probably never thought about it. You thought, oh, no, I was really, really busy. I didn't mean to insult or anything. It's just morning tea, just a bit of cake. Well, but you're communicating a lot through that. In that situation, what concerns me is that there are some people who don't see that activity as worthwhile. Mm -hmm. They see it as a waste of time. They see it as it's a bit like letting smokers go out of the building. So so someone's getting an extra bit of time off, for want of a better phrase, rather than me who has to work and me who has to meet these deadlines and Mm. I haven't got time for the socialising. They just don't see the value in that Mm. activity. That to me is a reflection of the culture that is a subculture that is being allowed to develop in an organisation. So do you insist that everyone stops and say, okay, we're, we're going to have morning tea and we're all going to stop for this period of time. It's, it's not the, mm-hmm. oh, you know, someone's got to get it all ready and so they have an hour off where everyone else just yeah. has the 15 minutes. Does it rotate through? And you know, so then it becomes this great exercise mm-hmm. of, of what happens when it's the birthday morning tea rather than the spontaneous yeah. gathering of people. And then we read so much into that situation that reflects back on our management style and and we start to, I know, start to resent the fact that we're expected to do these things. Mm. We're expected to contribute and all of the other things that that happen around that work community side of things Mm. that when you are, that I think is where the nonverbal pattern of behaviour communication happens. Mm-hmm. Well, with that, I'm, I'm sure that there's lots of people that absolutely behave, say, oh, God, do I have to, and fancy making us go. I totally agree. 
I'm, I'm putting it back on the individual rather than the process because it's an opportunity. Here is you could use it whichever way you like. Have a five minute breather <laughs> if you want at the very minimum, or have the opportunity to say hi and get to know people faces. Those things are also being done online. So it's, uh, you know, they still have virtual morning tea and mm. and all of that. So it still applies. And I think the individuals should see it as an opportunity, that's all, and do with it what you like. And what you like is walking away from your desk for a few minutes is healthy or, or from your computer, whatever. And the other thing is, is getting to meet people or talk to them, it's an opportunity is getting less and less available. So yeah. why wouldn't you want to want to use it? I wonder, I'd be interested to hear from those that are listening of whether they see that there's been a change in people's patterns. So do the ones who didn't turn up when it was in person, do they turn up when it's online? Does that give you some insight when you're managing them into their social skills, their yeah. interest in social activity? Oh, yeah. Are they more comfortable doing it online because they know they can limit themselves to the time they have? They know when they have to arrive. They know when they can leave. And because I think, in my experience, that's been the area that's greatest in terms of those interactions. And and to a certain extent, about going to meetings as well is how soon, how early yeah. do you arrive to a meeting? We know with Zoom that mm-hmm. we can generally we can get into a meeting five minutes before. So that's yeah. already managed for us. Mm-hmm. But, but often, particularly for people who haven't used it very regularly, I will have someone, because I can see them sign in, I will have someone yeah. sign in half an hour before the meeting. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily going to sit there and wait for me to turn up, no. but they just want to be sure that they're there and that technology is working and, and they're ready for when it is time to have the meeting so are we seeing that pattern of behavior made more obvious because of the technology because it's I don't think it's something that they would do if it was an in-person meeting Mm -hmm. and they're not looking for the interaction but it is about their pattern of behavior and it is something that we need to take note of is that they you know to me they're so committed to being at the meeting and being present, but they're making sure that everything's ready half an hour before. And yes, they might do that in person, but they wouldn't be at the meeting room. They'd be doing it at their desk. So we see a different pattern. We see an overall pattern of behaviour that is their commitment to the meeting and the, and the meeting time. Mm. And just in thinking about that and thinking about these people, they're often the ones who don't say anything at the meeting. Yeah. So I can't. I, I have a better sense that they are committed to the meeting mm. by that pattern of behaviour that says they're ready half an hour before, even if they don't say anything. I knew. I know that they wanted to be at the meeting. Mm. Where if it was in person, they might get themselves ready for the meeting, but I wouldn't see them preparing. I would see them turn up to the meeting, not say anything, and go back to their desk. Mm. And I get a different sense of their commitment and their interest in the meeting than I do when it's online and I know that they've prepared themselves. I get that reassurance that they've prepared themselves beforehand, even if they don't say anything at the meeting. That's an interesting thought that's just come to me while we've been talking about Mm. the difference in in meeting attendance and that it doesn't mean the same thing online Mm. as I might have assumed in person. It's a good point. That also applies to what they call staff meetings, like all staff meetings, or some refer to them as town hall meetings, whether it's in person or virtual. I had in the past, I come across people who says they didn't turn up to the town hall meeting. They're in a senior role and they didn't turn up to town hall meetings because they already knew what's going to be communicated and because, you know, they use their time differently. I found that irresponsible. I find that selfish. I know they're strong words, but it's really more about me, 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 and thinking, what about the others? What about the people communicating the message? Aren't you there to support that or be seen to be supporting it as well as supported? Aren't you there to be able to 
answer some specific questions that might be relevant to your area by people just giving them that opportunity by you being present, by you being present. And even if you said nothing, uh, it still shows, it's still communicating that you're part of this and you, you're there and in, in whatever capacity. And I think that's to me is, is that thing where uh, I'm busy, it's I can't afford the time. I was doing something really important. Why are the people picking on me? No, but we've got other responsibility in the communication we give inadvertently. And the message right. we're communicating is without realizing is really what we need to pay attention to. That's it. It's also, I guess, an area where as managers we can get really confused. It's almost information overload about looking at situations and thinking about what does that really mean and what are they telling me and what's the body language and and what's the non-verbal interaction that we're having. We're not suggesting that you analyse every situation, but we do want you to start thinking about the message that is being sent and whether that's something, I guess just in listening about the town hall meetings, whether it's something that is an organisation-wide miscommunication that you are seen to be valuable if you are too busy to attend a meeting that is important for everyone to hear and and to to be at. And that as managers, as as leaders, we are not emphasising the importance, the the relative importance of attending meetings as opposed to doing the day-to-day activities. And that we have talked and we've had other people talk about time management and organising your day and assessing priorities, that we are still these days in a routine of, or maybe we have fallen back into an old routine of assessing priorities based on how important it makes us look rather than getting the job done. And that I think at the time where we were not all working in the one place, we did set priorities. We did organise ourselves, our work and our home life and the, the conflicting priorities that we had in that situation. Why are we not transferring the skills that we developed in that period of time back into the workplace now? Because we obviously developed skills to manage that whole situation that was completely unknown to us. So have we now fallen back into the situations and the work environments that we know a bit better? And so we're just going back into old habits that are not necessarily the best habits for business to continue. A lot of that is is really more just reflecting on what we do, saying, am I? Or you might reflect and say, no, no, I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm going to continue to do it. Or, oops, I never thought of that bit. I thought I was doing the right thing and the message might be different. That's it. As always, what we're doing is just providing you with things to think about and to reflect on your own work situation. If you are concerned about how you are reading situations, then drop us a line. We're always happy to talk about that as a case study and to give you our views on what we would do in those situations. And we know that the case studies are very popular with our listeners. But for now, let's leave the topic of nonverbal communication that is not about body language. I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne, and this is Inside Exec. 